We're talking to Altrincham Football Club Chief Executive Officer John Williams here at the J. Davidson Stadium. Uh, John uh, said to you a couple of minutes ago that you've been in the role a couple of weeks now and you quickly corrected me and said actually it's nearly a month, which just shows how time flies. What What are your early observations of the club and uh, and your role? Yeah, it's been a bit of a whirlwind for weeks and it has flown by, as you say, John. Um, it, a lot to take in, a lot to do. Um, getting to know a lot of people, and and slowly putting those uh, those those names to a lot of faces. Um, everything's urgent. Everything is the priority. But where do you start? So, but slowly with the team as well uh, in the background, we're we're, we're getting there. And um, yeah, a lot to do. A lot to do. Well, of course, you're the first. You're the club's first ever chief executive yeah. officer which shows something about tells you something about the ambition of the club and the yes. direction we're moving in um it's a very responsible role and i guess one of the first things you do is get to know the people at the club the the, the players the staff yeah. the many volunteers what's your what's been your impressions what have your impressions been uh, of the people you met so far well everyone has been so welcoming i've got to say and uh it's been great to have messages and certainly the last game against dagenham Went to the fan zone, saw a few of the supporters. Some I've met before in Holland. Um, and then some were just sort of saying, well done, congratulations, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll back you, which has been great. And that, that's that's huge, to be fair. It does mean an awful lot. Uh, the volunteers, again, met quite a lot of them. I don't think I've met all of them, but I will be. Um, and they do a fantastic job because, I've said before, without the volunteers, it, it makes life a lot more difficult. Um, and we want more volunteers. We do want more to help us out. Um, and then the staff as well, everyone's bought into everything that we want to do. Uh, th there's a vision, but that vision changes weekly um, because we tweak things, we make sure things right, and until we get it right, which will take a few months, which will, will take time. But everyone, in answer to your question, John's been great. Are there enough hours in the day to do everything nope. you want to do? Nope, not at all. Far from it, no. Y your mind's constantly going. It really is. It's constantly you know my to-do list I have a page open so I don't forget and just constantly writing down where we're up to and what we've got to do because it's non-stop and especially when games are coming up we're coming up to a two game back-to-back -back, um, week uh, Saturday Saturday um, and the games are coming thick and fast and you're planning not just match day but non-match day as well and uh, it's relentless. Well, I was going to say it's it's um, it's a, a job that's that's sort of far-reaching. You you know you you you're looking at all elements of the football club, I guess. And I know that so it's probably difficult to be specific, but overall, I guess the the, the, the you, you, your objective is to try and improve in in all aspects of the club. I mean, mm. is that are you, are you getting the, the the sort of feedback and the impression that that's 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 doable, if you like? Yeah, I, mean, I knew what the what the remit was before before I came and what we needed to do. And it's it's almost building a strategy around how we're going to get there. Not just match day, but non-match day as well. So match day, we know when the games are on, but it's also the non-match day and the events that we can have in the in the community hall. You know, we've got quite a few bookings for uh, birthday parties and, and weddings and so on, but we need more. And we need the community and everyone to buy in that we can, we do that. And some people may forget, but we have that facility. Um, there's also things on match day where we've got now we've got the fan zone, which I'll come on to shortly. Um, that was incredibly popular and, and packed for the first game against Dagenham a couple of weeks ago. And um, then just putting a strategy together of how we can increase the revenue into the football club, what direction we're going, being creative, you know, using a lot of maybe player content, using the assets that we've got to make sure that we're, you know, the fan engagement is important. And those things we're going to do later on that will will have that fan engagement. So there's an awful lot we can do, but also with businesses as well. You know the business club, which I'm going to be um, speaking at on the first of September, which we'll announce shortly, and uh, getting to know local businesses, which I've got to speak to quite a few. But there's more to come, and and with the business club from September when everyone's back off holiday, it'll be hopefully a busy one. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, we've got Manchester United, Manchester City on our doorstep, so mm. there's a, a, a real kind of competition there for getting people to come along here. But, you, well, it is a fact, thing, isn't it, that, that there is real potential for yeah. uh, this club to keep growing f fan base-wise and yep. also backing-wise, because we've seen 
behind you at Atlantic Timber, the new main stand sponsors. We've just had fantastic news about a, a, a massive investment. new investment as well. So the, the the tools are there, aren't they, for, for going places? The club right now is in a fantastic place on and off the field. We've had the announcement last week, as you say, about the investment into the football club, which is great. Um, we've got businesses and, and companies, local companies buying in, like you say, Atlantic Timber behind me on, on the main stand. Um, we've got on the pitch, we've got had a good start, real good start, um, especially the last two away games. But there's more to come and we want to keep improving every single game, every single meeting, every single event, always better it. And if we can keep can keep doing that, we'll be where we want to be come the end of the season. But these things do take time. Yeah, I was going to say that um, important though it is, and it certainly is, that things are happening behind the scenes, off the pitch with uh, people coming in in numbers and uh, local businesses getting behind the club. What happens on the pitch behind you is obviously a paramount importance. Mm. Um, and you say it's been a great start to the season. How much of the three games have you managed to see? I've been to all. All three? Yeah, yeah, I've been to all three. Impressions? Yeah, yeah. very good. Um, I think uh, the first game, you know, we can go on about the added minutes and the 98th minute goal equaliser. It is what it is. Um, Woking, not many teams will go there this season and win. They were up there last season and you could see why. But I think a well-deserved 3-2 win. Um, and then York, uh, again, 2-2, didn't panic when we went a goal down, came back, could have nicked it, to be honest with you, at the end. So, in a good place. I've seen all three and I'm very impressed and uh, the new lads have settled in. I think it's apparent as well that there's, there's apart from a, a work ethic, which you, you're always going to get with Phil Parkinson and Neil Sorvel, and uh, a desire to keep the ball on the deck and play, there's real talent in the team, isn't there? In, oh, absolutely. In terms of individual oh, players. Without a doubt. They've all, you know, the, the good characters, the good lads, They've got talent. I think, um, you know, highlight so Ethan in goal. He's he's made two fantastic saves in a couple of games and at, at the end of the games um, and a good lad as well. So all the lads come in, have, have, from what I've seen, have fitted in well. The lads that have been here before, you, you're Matty, Matty Coslow, he's a character. You know, he's settling them in as well and, and, and a leader as well as, as a few are to be honest with you. But um, no, very impressed with uh, the first few games. Big test coming up on Saturday against the Boreham Wood mm. uh, team who were playoff semi-finalists last season and yep. only got knocked out by Knox County after extra time. So that's going to be quite an occasion. And Phil Parkinson made a point of saying after last night's game at York City that he wanted fans through the gate in numbers and in, 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 in voice as well. It, it really it was, a, it was a real from the heart plea for uh, for an electrifying atmosphere to be created. I, I guess you, you'd echo the, those sentiments. Absolutely. And that's why I wanted to sort of update people of where we're up to um, first month in. I think that's important. But absolutely echo what the manager said. We need and want as mu many as we possibly can in the stadium on Saturday afternoon cheering the lads on because it helps the, mass, the football club, it helps the lads, helps Phil and we're on a good roll, like I say, on and off the field. We're in a good place and I said it before, uh, your club needs you. Everything we can do, any asset we've got to, to win that game on Saturday and moving forward is great and again I've said, the club is in a good place. There's never a better time to be part of Altrincham Football Club right now and we just want a three points on Saturday because these games are coming thick and fast Chesterfield a week after filed on the Monday they don't stop it's relentless but we need that good start we always need a good start compared to last season we know where we've got to be but so far so good uh, what would you make of the match day experience and uh, John what would mm. you say to fans uh, I mean it's obvious that they, they come along the likelihood is based on evidence pretty much since Phil and Neil walked through the mm. door, certainly in the what they see in the season, they're going to see an entertaining spectacle on the pitch. Mm. But what, what are the other aspects that make the match day experience so enjoyable here, would you say? Well, off the pitch, I saw obviously the Dagenham game. I was here, obviously I'm, I'm here. But it was just me just watching and seeing what was, what was happening and how it works. The fan zone was a massive success. It really was. It was a packed fan zone before the game, everyone was buoyant, in good mood, the first game of the season, um, it was busy. Um, we want the same again this weekend. Uh, food offerings, which we've got, you know, curry, 
rice, samosas, barges. So we're doing things different. Is this all in the fan zone? Or? It's in the fan zone. Yeah, yeah. it's all everything's in, it's, it's on the fan zone. So we're doing things very different, and uh, we've we've teamed up with a, a company called Authentic Food who, who are supporting us on that. So that's busy. Um, we'll have a couple of players that will be seen and, vi- and visual with in the fan zone as well, and, and walking around the community hall and the sponsors lounge. Uh, Rocky Robin. Um, we've got a uh, uh, sponsors lounge where we'll have a player beforehand, and then the man of the match goes in with another player after. So an awful lot going on, but it's improving all the time, and these things will just tweak and tweak and tweak. But it's drawing people in. We want to draw as many as we can in, and echoing what Phil said, it help, obviously helps him. We really are catering for all kind of, if you like, tastes. Actually, probably taste is the right words. You're talking about curries and things like that. <laughs> I mean, the, the um, sponsorship, the hospitality package over there yeah. uh, in the sponsors lounge. The, I, I went to, I um, booked a table, well, it's a couple of seats for a game last season, and the quality of the uh, food w- was absolutely mm. exceptional. I mean, yeah. it was far better than I ever remember it being. Yeah. Um, and the service, everything about it was really top notch. Mm. Mm. Um, then you've got the community sports hall, which of course can cater for so, so many people and offers food and drink. And the fan zone, I think, is just, I mean, it's taken a little while to get going, but it, it's absolutely fantastic if you can get, you, you can help such a craft beer or whatever your, your, your taste is in uh, liquid refreshments and if there are curries and things like that as well. Mm. And it's a very convivial space mm. for meeting it as is, well, isn't it? It is. And, you know, fair play to, to Stuart and the team who've who've worked so hard um, to get up and running with Mark Louvie, a director, staying director, who's who's helped set that up as well and, and uh, with a team of people because this is what helped, this is it this what supports the football club and having a fan zone there's not many clubs at this level have such a thing as a fan zone on on their own land mm. and we've got that and it's a good space but it will improve and uh we just need as many as we can in to uh to, to join us when you're talking about hospitality yes um august is predominantly very quiet for hospitality however we are getting a lot of bookings for the games from september we want that to continue. Chesterfield a week on Saturday. We want as many as we can in. It's a bank holiday weekend. Um, the offerings is a three-course meal on a Saturday, two-course on a Tuesday. Again, a player comes in beforehand. Man of the match comes in after. There's entertainment uh, with, with the players. A bit, a bit of fun, a bit of banter. And they get to meet some of the lads that come in. And So it's a good atmosphere. It's a good atmosphere. And you're right on the food. Absolutely top notch. Yeah. So for for Boreham Wood and Chesterfield as well, of course, are there seats or tables still available for if people want to book? For Chesterfield, there is absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah for Chesterfield, um, for, for 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 Saturday's game, Boreham Wood, um, it's busy. So, but Chesterfield is certainly places available. Uh, and what should people do? Is it, is it a case of booking online, or and, and also do they have to book a table, or can they book an individual seat? You can book, I mean, some people book a couple of seats, you yeah. can book that, you can book a table. If you go online, go on hospitality, you'll see uh, hospitality, you go on the game, click the game. On, on the club's website? On the club's website, yeah. yes, absolutely. Just to wrap it up then, John, uh, on the um, you, you know the one thing that we really want above all else on Saturday is, a, if not a full house, as near as possible and a great atmosphere. And Phil has outlined the effect that has on the players, a positive effect. But from a fan's point of view, um, well, I, I not imagine, I, I know, being a fan myself, that there's nothing like being part of a big crowd with a great atmosphere. It, it just feels electrifying from start to finish. So that's another incentive, I guess, for people to come along in as great a number numbers as, as possible. Without a doubt. I mean, the, the win last Saturday at Woking was just, you could see when I walked out the ground, you could see a few, a few altering of fans I saw and they were... I think I put a tweet out. It makes the long journey home a lot, a lot sweeter, and it did because uh, that was a, a damn good win. We want to, we want to do it again on our own turf on Saturday with as many people as we can in the stadium. So I'd urge anybody, please come along, support the, your local club. We need you. We want you. We want to see you here. Support the lads because there's no better feeling than a win on a Saturday afternoon. So that's the message, folks. Get yourself along here and make it an afternoon that none of us will forget in a hurry. That's Altrincham's Chief Executive Officer, John Williams. John, thanks for your time. Thanks, John.